Last year, the very first video that I uploaded on YouTube was a Python IDE comparison or Jubilab Desktop 1. However, since it's not being developed anymore, we're going to do another comparison today to look for alternatives. Today's video is going to be a lot quicker though, because we're not going to look at online interpreters. So we're not going to look at things like Google Colab, because the feedback I've gotten from basically everyone that came to my Python courses, even if they had problems installing IDEs on their computer, they would rather spend a couple of hours fixing those problems than working online. And the reason for that is both for people working at universities, but also people working in companies. They can't just upload their data to an online interpreter where the data is then being used to train AI models. It violates both university policies as well as company policies. While online interpreters are in principle the easiest to set up for beginners because you don't need to set them up and you don't need to install anything, the usability is very much limited. So if you just want to get your feet wet, try a little bit around with programming, you can do it. But since sooner or later you're going to need an IDE anyways, today we're only going to focus on the offline IDEs. As I said before, JupyterLab Desktop is not being developed anymore, which is unfortunate because I really liked it. It was easy to install, easy to set up, and with a very clean user interface. But what can you do? JupyterLab in principle has the same user interface and the same usability. However, since it does not come with a built-in browser. So JupyterLab Desktop came with a built-in browser. JupyterLab doesn't, so it opens in whatever is the default browser in your system. And you can imagine if I'm giving a Python course to 12 people, one person will use Firefox, one will use Chrome, one will use Safari, and all these browsers will have different cache sizes and RAM requirements and other things. So there usually always is a problem, which is why we switched to JupyterLab Desktop, because it came with a browser built in, but that browser is exactly the problem why they couldn't continue developing it, because as soon as you ship a browser, there are security issues, security risks, and that was just more work than what they could do. And another feature that JupyterLab doesn't have is you cannot just double click on a Jupyter Notebook file and open it. That worked in JupyterLab Desktop, but in JupyterLab you always have to open a terminal in the folder where the file is and then type in JupyterLab and then open the file from there, which first of all is inconvenient. And second of all, for beginners, I always had to teach them how to use a command line first before they could even open a JupyterLab file, which was not very convenient. Not for them, not for me. So with that, JupyterLab Desktop is out, JupyterLab is out. Spider, since last year, hasn't really improved when it comes to Jupyter Notebook support. It can open them, but it only has very basic functionality, so it's not something I would recommend using for Jupyter Notebooks. What you can use them for is basic Python files, and even in multi-file projects, it's very good for that. But when it comes to Jupyter Notebooks, it's just not made for that. It was always the separation Spider for the Python files and Jupyter Lab for Jupyter Notebooks. Now Z last year was still in beta stadium for Windows and as of November 2025, it still is. And since most of the people that come to my Python courses use Windows, I can't recommend it. Wing IDE is a very professional Python IDE. However, Jupyter Notebook support you only get when you pay $179 a year. And as I said last year, I can't tell beginners to shell out money for something they can get otherwise for free. Especially because a lot of the pro features that you pay for with that subscription, you simply don't need as a beginner. Which basically brings us to the age-old question, VS Code or PyCharm. Last year, I kicked PyCharm out of this comparison because for basic Jupyter Notebook functionality, you did have to pay. And as I said, I'm teaching beginners, I can't expect them to pay for their IDE. So maybe they watched my video and now they made it free. So thank me for that. Either way, it's a good competitor now to VS Code because all the basic functionality is basically the same. You can double click on Jupyter Notebook files and open them. You have the table of contents built into both IDEs. You can add rulers so you know when to do a line break. You can zoom into interactive matplotlib plots. The differences are more in the details. So as I said in the last video about the package managers, Mamba, Micromamba, Pixie are not compatible with PyCharm. So if you want to use those package managers, you do need to use VS Code. However, my current recommendation of Miniforge works with both VS Code and PyCharm. Now the main difference between PyCharm and VS Code to me is that PyCharm is a specialized IDE just for Python. So the makers of PyCharm, JetBrains, they make different IDEs for different programming languages, which means that if you're using PyCharm, for example, you only see menu options and buttons that are relevant to Python programming. Whereas VS Code is a general purpose IDE. So when you install it, by default, there's not a lot of functionality. And then you need to install a bunch of extensions to make Python and Jupyter work. In VS Code, you have specialized profiles where you say, okay, I want to use VS Code for Python development, and then it installs all these packages for you. However, even after you do that, if you, for example, type into the command palette debug, you still are shown debug options for JavaScript. And if you only want to do scientific Python programming, you will never need that. 
So that to me always made the VS Code user interface a bit overloaded because you're shown a bunch of options that you're never gonna need. That is a lot better in PyCharm because it's Python only. However, because VS Code is open source, you have a massive extension ecosystem where whatever functionality you may want or need, you can generally find an extension that will enable you to do that. One of these things that is quite relevant for scientists is to be able to open HDF5 files. And for VS Code, there's a plugin for that, whereas for PyCharm, there's not. JetBrains also offers some extensions for PyCharm. However, every single extension is being checked by them so they are not offering that many. And because of that, there are also not that many developers that actively contribute to PyCharm. Whereas because VS Code is open source, a lot of people contribute and that gives you this massive ecosystem of extensions. So my current recommendation for beginners is actually PyCharm over VS Code because all you need to do is download it and install it and you can start programming because it comes with everything Python related built in. So there's no need to install any additional extensions. And because you only see menu options and buttons that are relevant to you, the user interface is a bit cleaner than VS Code. However, this is not a massive advantage. So if you're deciding to go with VS Code, I think you also don't really go wrong if you're planning in a little bit more time to get everything up and running. Because one last advantage of VS Code over PyCharm is that simply more people are using it. So if all your colleagues are using VS Code, you might also want to use it. All that being said, why am I not just recommending Cursor and Windsurf when they have all these very powerful AI tools built in and you can basically vibe code yourself into oblivion? The thing is this, for beginners and for anyone really, I do think there is value in learning programming first and then using the AI tools because if you don't, it's a bit like using a calculator without learning how to do basic math operations first. If you know math and you're using a calculator and it tells you 2 plus 2 is 5, you know it's wrong. But if you've never learned basic arithmetic and the calculator tells you 2 plus 2 is 5, then you have to believe it. And it's the same with vibe coding. So if the AI tools give you some code and you don't know what's going on, first of all, you might not even know when there is an error or a bug in the code. And even if you do, you have no way of fixing it because the AI can't fix it because otherwise it wouldn't have made the error in the first place. And usually once they make a mistake and you try to fix it, it just gets worse from there and you don't have the skills to fix it yourself, so then you're stuck. Plus, as of right now, Cursor and Windsurf are not really made to work with Jupyter Notebooks, and I think they're really useful, especially for scientific computing. While we're on the topic of AI, what about the built-in AI in VS Code and PyCharm? PyCharm just released their Juni AI Assistant, but the reviews have been mixed so far. In terms of VS Code, it has GitHub Copilot built in, which I reviewed last year when it was really terrible. However, Microsoft has made GitHub Copilot open source a few months ago, so I'm expecting it to become a lot better over the next months. So right now, Cursor and Windsurf would be the better tools if you only want to do AI-driven development, but I wouldn't write off GitHub Copilot just yet, because usually once things become open source, they get better quickly because more people can contribute.